Welcome to Libby's Leadership Lab. I'm Libby Gill, and I'm here to help you level up your leadership skills so you can create the professional life you really want without sacrificing your personal life. I've been guiding women executives and entrepreneurs for more than 30 years. First, as a C-suite corporate exec, heading communications at three major Hollywood studios, and now as a business owner and leadership coach. So let's get started. It's time to invent your future. Hey everybody, welcome to the Leadership Lab. Well, many of you know I started my entertainment career. This is after I was a hand model for Fancy Feast Cat Food and a talking Christmas tree, but I really started my corporate career at Sony. Uh, it was pre-Sony, because it was a company that was founded by television producer. If you're old enough, you may remember All in the Family, but it was a company started by Norman Lear. And I thought, what a cool thing. I get to join this company of maybe 150 people. I'm going to know everything there is about television in a couple of months. And that company was bought, you know, practically five minutes after I got there uh, by Columbia Pictures and then Coca-Cola, and then it became part of Sony. And for me, I had the good fortune of just raising my hand and volunteering, raising my hand again and again. And in five years, I went from being an assistant in the PR department of that small production company to the vice president, the head of publicity, advertising and promotion for Sony's television group. And it was a great ride for me. I had no idea. Um, I had people with much more experience and smarts than I did, but you know, I was kind of willing to take the front line. And so I'm super excited to have my guest today who is from Sony. Edie Givens is an expert in all things human resources and has a real passion for working with women. So welcome, Edie. I'm so glad you're here. Hi, Libby. How are you? I'm great. So I feel like I'm back to my back to my roots, um, back to Sony <laughs> and talking about things have changed so much since I've been out of the entertainment industry. So before we jump into our conversation, Edie, give us a little capsule on your background and your own leadership journey. Sure. So I should start off by saying that Sony is now an $8 billion company yeah. with 7,000 employees in 60 different countries. Wow. So you are absolutely right. It has taken off. It's a subsidiary of bigger Sony. And what's really interesting about so working at Sony right now is while we don't have a streaming service, we have a unique uh, sort of niche in the market where we sell content to all the streamers. We're one of the only studios that do. And so it's, per, it's proven to be lucrative for us. We do things, we do uh, television like Outlander and The Crown, um, among movies, which I know you know, which would be like Spider-Man and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Right. So how did I end up here? So I was 20 years in Silicon Valley. Um, I worked for some great Fortune 500 companies like Adobe Systems and Yahoo. And at Yahoo, I had the media groups and I flew down to LA on a regular basis. And I got a call from a search firm saying, would you be interested in working for Sony? And I was, in, as I said, in Silicon Valley, and I said, uh, okay, so I'm figuring it's Sony Electronics or, or what have you, I've only been in tech. And they said, actually, it's Sony Pictures. I said, oh, come on. Like, <laughs> me? <Yeah>. Me? <laughs> and um, what, what was, Appealing to them was the experience that I had in tech, and especially at Yahoo, when you look at the sort of the digital transformation that was happening in the industry right now, and you think about um, films, and uh, you know, you, you and you know this based on your experience, billboards, posters, that's that's still relevant, but now it's all about you know, uh, creating content for international business, international customers. About social media and you know really transforming into a digital a digital world and they were looking someone for someone in the tech industry that had that experience so I ended up um, coming down here about five years ago and we have successfully transformed our business um, I would say um, it has been a complete turnaround with a new leadership structure, a new organization, a digitization, a collapsing of windows. And what I mean by that is when you have a film like Venom, 
We have a, the same team working on it from the theatrical side all the way through the home entertainment side and the SVOD and the PVOD. And so it's a way to think holistically about the strategy. So it's been fun to be part of all this. Because as a consumer, it, it used to be move, film opens, it could be nine to 12 to 18 months before we would see it on what was back then DVD or video, now yes. streaming, but those windows have so short. Shrinking. Yeah. Yes, and I would yes. imagine having your, not having a, your own streaming platform allows you to really focus on content development. That's exactly it. And what you'll see is a lot of our content that we sell, um, like The Boys or Cobra Kai, you'll see with streamers saying, hey, Netflix original and Amazon original, but it's actually a lot of content that we're supplying and they're buying, which is great for us. It's a, it's a, unique, it's a unique position for us, because I said, we're the only studio and um, we're a great supplier. And that's always been the case for cable. You know, when we see Breaking Absolutely. Bad, um, yeah, it's it's not that cable outlet. It's you making the content and providing it to them. And at the end of the day, we used to have this argument in the, in the PR world. It doesn't really matter because the consumer is not focused on is this an HBO or is this absolutely? It's like what's the show? What's the movie? That's mm -hmm. what I want to see. Mm -hmm. So was it a huge transition going from technology to media to I mean to entertainment media? For you? It was a, a very dramatic transition. I would imagine. <laughs> and for those of you who've worked in Silicon Valley or for tech companies, it's goals and objectives, it's measurables, it's people are rated and ranked, and quarterly business reviews. And um, you're, you think of employees as talent. And, and, that, and you regularly say, like, we have, what's the top 10% talent? And those are typically your engineers that are super creative and innovative. When I was at Adobe, I had the Photoshop team. I mean, they were coveted. Yeah. When I came down to entertainment, I said, well, let's look at who is our top talent. And it was like, well, we have Brad Pitt. We have Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> exactly. Said, well, what about your people? Like, let's talk about your people. Well, what's been interesting in the biggest transition and, you know, the entertainment business and the film business is, is, is an evol it's obviously evolved quite a bit. And there's so much competition now for employees. They think of employees as truly as talent because you have the streamers coming at them like Amazon and Netflix offering a lot more money. And there's trade-offs. There's trade-offs with working with a streamer versus a studio. And um, so we do think of our people as talent. Uh, before then, our attrition was very low. Once you got a job in the studio, you were, you. it was a- you stayed. Those were dream stayed. jobs. I'm in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, even when I was there, it wasn't that long ago, but yeah, you tended to stick around because those are coveted mm -hmm. positions. I mean, you're a, a VP or a director or an EVP of a creative area and creative could be anything. I mean, marketing, design, actual development, writing, all of those areas. I mean, I have a client, a young client who was a, uh, a CPA and worked at Ernst & Young and dying to get into entertainment. And so to her, that was a really creative field as an on-set production accountant. And she ended up landing a job at Fast and Furious. And boy, it was like, oh, a dream come true to be, I mean, that accounting job was so creative. So there, there is a lot of energy, a lot of excitement around working in the entertainment field. Do you feel yeah, a there, difference? There, it, there is. There is. And, you know, there's five studios. There's lots and lots of production companies. Yeah. When you think about tech, there is that hundreds, hundreds, perhaps thousands of tech companies. Yeah. So landing a job at a studio is a big deal. Now, yeah. in a turnaround situation, um, certain studios, it, it could be Universal's year, it could be Disney's year, it could be Sony's year. And, and it ebbs and flows. But I remember um, someone saying to me once, there is nothing more magical than being part of a studio, working on a studio lot when you're at the top. Yeah. Is there's an electricity, there's a, there's a, um, a vibrant sea and um, it's very special. Yeah, I was there when, and now I'm dating myself, but when the switch was made with Warner Brothers facility and the what was the old MGM and Sony moved to Culver City 
and you're walking around what was the MGM lot. And I was such a fan of these old musicals. And you're mm -hmm. you're there on the set with all of that. And it was like that studio, the, the remodels and the changes that kept true to the historical nature of the studio. But it was like overnight, you know, it just came to life. It was really exciting. It is a beautiful studio lot. It yeah. is in Culver City. It's, I think it's 25 acres. It used to be a lot bigger. Um, there's 30 sound stages. They do a lot of television there. So you are, you just walk from building to building. And then there's, uh, you know, I've run into, uh, I've seen Brad Pitt. I've seen um, many, um, <laughs> I've seen many celebrities and Tim Reese Witherspoon and you're walking and you can't look at them. You no, we in going. Hollywood know you cannot gawk. You cannot. But <laughs> to your point about, I'm a big MGM fan as well. Yeah. And I loved Esther Williams films, who's yeah. a wonderful swimmer. And to know that I was in the building where there was the pool uh, that she swam. Yeah. Or we filmed um, Gone with the Wind there or Wizard of Oz. And it's just, it's magical. Um, on one of the, the main pathways called Main Street, there's a there's a gold brick. And it's a commemorative to Wizard of Oz. And so it, it's special. It is pretty exciting. So with all the changes that we're seeing now based on COVID and remote working and all of that, um, what have you seen among your talent? Um, what's been the reaction? How are people feeling? I'm sure there's some people that are coming into the office masked and, and taking precautions, but what's been the biggest shift in terms of your people? So what's What's really interesting is, is that there's, there's a couple things happening. Is first of all, on the lot, as, a, like as of June, we are in full production. And we are, are filming both um, television shows and film on lot. Because of all the COVID guidelines, we do have um, regular testing. And depending on how close you are to um, you know, interacting with people, like a cameraman may get tested once a week, but talent may get tested, um, you know, daily. Yeah. So it is like a clean room. So right now there are very, very few employees, maybe a dozen or so. Most of it is production and we have to keep that um, safe mm -hmm. to keep that um, protected. So, so that's what's happening right now. Almost, you just have to envision like barriers around production because you can't have somebody like myself come on lot that hasn't been tested right. and is the commissary and something happens and a show shut down. That can cost millions of dollars. Right. So what we have learned from our employees is um, they can work effectively at home. There is, we've done some sort of ancillary surveys and things. And what we have discovered is there's a balance. Like lots of people like working from home, but likely it'll be a hybrid model going forward because people miss the socialization sure. and being part of the community on the lot. I mean, at, at, most times there could be, you know, anywhere between four and 6,000 people and all. It is like a little city. Yeah. And it's, it's, and people are social animals. Yeah. But I think, and so there's, there's, there's a need to want to connect. And so we're going to have to figure out a hybrid model of, of slowly bringing back people, whether it's 25% one week, another 25% another week. Do you bring back teams so they can start working more collectively together? But right now, Honestly, we didn't anticipate being, we didn't anticipate leaving on March, wherever it was a Friday the 13th, I remember, and not coming back likely for a full year. Right. I mean, that's kind of where things are going in the industry. So I would say uh, resiliency, there's a lot of resiliency. There's, there's, um, there's, there's going to be a balance and we'll, we'll see what happens, but you, it's almost something like you can't plan for it. We're just going to have to wait and see. Play it out as it goes. Yeah. And, and I know you, you teach in several universities at, at UCLA and USC and is it uh, Loyola Marymount? Is that the other yes. one? Yeah. Loyola. So you have a real passion for, for teaching and, and developing leaders as they're coming up. So what, do you, what is the core essence of that? What do you, what's the most important thing that you impart to your students about career paths and jobs and yeah. and I'm sure many are interested in getting into entertainment so you probably yes. know that and that's what I teach is careers and entertainment and it is as you said earlier it's a very sexy and appealing industry yeah. 
Um, what I try to impart is be prepared to be in the industry. Um, internships are very, very important. Um, what your degree is is very important. Uh, where you in some places where you go to school and the and the extracurricular work that you do on the side, you have to have a passion for it. Um, as you know, I support Columbia Pictures, and we will have an entry level role open up, like a summer intern or what we call a trainee, which is someone fresh out of school. We could easily get a thousand resumes in twenty four wow. hours. And I would say more than half of those are from schools like USC and NYU film majors. Right. And so if you're, if, if you're interested in this business, you better put your head down and show that you have passion for it and be deliberate and be planful because it's an extremely competitive business. Like and I said, how, five how studios. Do, how does somebody stand out among those thousands of applicants that you get? Well, I think we look at the whole, we look at the whole resume and the whole person. Yeah. So we look at um, the schools they go to, but we look at their, um, their accomplishments with respect to their extracurricular activities. Yeah. Are they doing films on the sides and creating them on their own? Are they, and right now we're looking at TikTok and we're looking at, um, you know, other forms of social media as far as what have they created like short form films, right. films leadership opportunities, um, it's very difficult to get a job in a studio as when you're a freshman or a sophomore. So the, the hustling of getting into a smaller production company, um, it is really, it, you have to be tenacious. It can't be, it can't be a part-time or I think that would be fun. You have to be deliberate. Yeah. Right. If you don't have that, there's, a, you know, like UCLA has a fantastic adult education a certification called the business of entertainment. Go get that. But if you're an English major or you're a economics major, it's it, if you want to get into the creative side of film, um, it's going to be more difficult for you. I think a lot of people forget that you don't have to be on the creative side. There's so many opportunities, the same ones you would find at any large corporation. Uh, the HR side, the accounting side, the physical facilities, production side, all of yeah. those things exist. Like you said, it's a city. I mean, there are real estate people that work at studios. There absolutely is. Yeah, yeah right. I always say you, you got to know who the facilities person is, too, if you want your door unlocked when you've got a photo shoot on a soundstage. Um, <laughs> Yeah, there are lots of lots of opportunities. And I know that you have, like I do, a, a special passion for working with women and helping them exceed and advance in their careers. And like any field today, there can be some bias, unconscious or otherwise. Um, so what do you what tips do you have for women, whether they're in entertainment or other fields, just working their way up towards those leadership roles? Well, I've done a lot of work with um what uh, I would say there's three, three avenues where I gather information. Mm -hmm. um, we partnered with Stanford, um, the Lean In School, the, the organization that helped write the book and what have you. And we brought them down to the Sony lot to do a couple of things, to talk about women and presence and power and holding yourself in the room. How, what do you do when someone cuts you off? Um, what do you do when you have a seat at the table, but you're not, just not quite sure? And it was, it was fantastic. And um, I would encourage you to look at them and look at some of their principles and their thoughts and their ideas. There's so much that women can do to have personal power. And I remember Michelle Obama once said, if you have a seat at the table, you better figure out a way to use it. Yeah. There can be no excuses. Do not waste it and be a role model for other women. But there's a lot, another woman who I really admire and respect named Amy Cuddy, who is a professor yeah. in the East Coast. And she does- Power a, pose. You yeah. got it. And <laughs> I just think if you haven't watched her videos, watch them. Yeah. And it, it talks about women making themselves big and opening up their arms and not crossing your legs and making yourself small. And that increases your testosterone and decreases your cortisol. Exactly. Right. Uh, before an interview, make yourself big, go into yeah. the bathroom, move your arms. <laughs> um, and because if you look at men, they make themselves naturally big. Right. You know, their, their legs are a, a certain position. They're not crossed. Arms um, are, yeah. Arms are open. 
So I think she's fantastic. And I, I know there's been some controversy on some of her um, research measurements. Studies. Yeah. I, I just think she's great. And you know, take it for what it's worth and see if it works for you. Yeah, I agree with you. I've sent so many women into the restroom to do their power pose. It's like, yeah, well, yeah, okay, you know. Oh yeah, jump up and down, do whatever gets your energy. It, 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 it goes right back to the animal kingdom. You know, yeah. you, you you need to be big if you're gonna scare off a predator. And the same thing is, you know, a hiring manager, you're not gonna scare them off, but you're not gonna look like a shrinking violet in the room either. Right. You have to make your presence known. Yeah, for sure. And in your way that you can do that. Um, you know, you have to figure out your own style. Yeah. Other one that I absolutely love, and I, I recommend um, the, the listeners here to take a look at some of the videos from Carla Harris. She is, um, I think, 31 years on Wall Street, and she's a vice chairman of Morgan Stanley and a person of color, and how she survived and overcame and just was such she's so successful and she's the way she speaks with such power yeah and such conviction um and she talks about coming up with three adjectives to describe yourself and 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 just owning that and then looking at what your company what do they care about and she says you can just go on your website and you can figure it out <laughs> find out yeah right and figure out the intersection and then behave that way yeah and I also believe in, you know, from my old branding days, if plant that seed, let people know what you stand for. Don't be, don't keep it That's invisible. Right. I have some people I coach. I'm coaching a wonderful woman right now who the that term that you used, owning it, comes up. And it's like, she's got to own it. She's got to, you know, have her seat. And she said, you know, I'm really a lead from the middle kind of person. I said, then let that be known that this is what you do. I'm not going to give direct orders. I want us to be collaborative and it works for her. I said, all you have to do is acknowledge and own that that's works for you that's and you it. keep doing it. Yeah. And it's, it's really interesting. There's some simple things. So our experiment for our our listeners in the lab here, you've cited three great things. One is go to YouTube and look up Amy Cuddy because those are such simple things to do. And I agree with you. They just work. They just amp you up and get you work excited. For me. Yeah, me too. Me too. Mm -hmm. Carla Harris, there's something so conversational about her, but so powerful. She is authentic to herself. I mean, she talks like you oh, would, yeah. would imagine if you're sitting in the room with her. Um, but she's got so much power and authority. And then look at the Lean In research. I get the report every year because Lean In McKinsey does a report each year on women in the workplace where I get all the latest stats. So being armed with that information and trying it out in the real world, I think can really help people stay visible, even on Zoom. You know, if you're, yes. you're shrinking into a little corner and not speaking up, you have to be a presence. You have to have it lit. You have to talk to people. I think you have to over communicate right now. I think so too. And one thing that's actually turning out to be an advantage on Zoom is every box is the same size. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't ignore the you, you can't ignore the box in the middle or the box on the left because if someone has something to say the room it the room the virtual room is an equalizer yes so that's interesting it has, i have heard from other women that has created opportunity for them because if if you notice some rooms i'm sure many women listening uh, can you know resonate with this is often the power is on one end of the table and then it as it goes down yeah. right now there's no table yeah you can own it yeah mm -hmm. absolutely the other thing i would say is a tip that has really helped um a lot of women at sony is work with your other women and yeah. and create a community and i had a situation happen once about three or four years ago where i was talking about something and i kept getting interrupted by a man yeah. and and I could not shut it down. Well, the lean in research helped me with that. Like, how do you tell me again what you're saying? Like, repeat it. Are you saying da da da? Yeah, I have that. Don't worry. If you just give me a minute, like, there's a way to con oh. take the control. The other added thing with the, the community of women that I work with at Sony, which is the best community of women I've worked with at any company, is they'll say, you know what? Let Edie speak. Oh, for sure. I don't know what she's saying. Yep. 
Um, I teach that as well. And there, it's interesting, it goes back to even to the Obama administration where there were yes. so few female senators that they called it amplification. So I talk about the art of ampli amplification, just what you're saying. Even You don't even have to agree with the person who's speaking, but you can say, Edia, I'm not sure I, I'm not sure where you're going with that, but I'd love to hear a little more. Or yes. I, I have a contrasting view, Edie. Let's talk that through. You got to give the airtime. And yeah. I always tell people, I don't care if you do it, uh, if you collude, you know, silently together and say, this is what we're going to do, or you role model it, whatever works. Because we've all had that, you know, it's, I will describe that scenario that you said about um, you speak up and then somebody jumps in and then Joe at the end of the table says the same thing and it's like yeah, oh yeah, yeah and they yeah. recognize him yeah. oh Joe you're so smart <laughs> I have had that conversation and given that example in Kuwait in in South America and just asked if and every head nods all the women across the globe have experienced this so it, it, you really do have to be prepared just know it's coming and know what your response is going to be that's right you're so that's smart right. So smart. Well, Edie, this has been a joy catching up with you and Sony, and I'm still working with Sony, as you know. I I'll never go away. It's it's my, it's my homegrown. You know, it's my uh, stomping grounds from the old days. But if people are interested in careers at Sony, where should they go? We have we just redid our website. It is a beautiful website. We did it last year. Sony Pictures at uh, Careers. And the feature, it was the, one of the first things that I did when I took over talent acquisition is you can go in and, and put in an alert. And it says, you know, if there is a marketing manager job open, let, notify me. And I would highly recommend you do that because if you don't, that role could be filled within 24 hours. Yeah. Oh, that's so smart. Get the alert. Get the alert. And then... The other thing I would say is if you want to work at Sony or any company, that this is another thing I teach, you know, the students is research them, know who your CEO is, know you who are you for not what your who and you know what leads the company and what your financials are. Be prepared and know what you want to do. Don't just apply for 25 jobs. Customize a resume for a role and, and really hone in and be very clear and you know definitive on what you want to do. Yeah. Do you can. That's so smart. Thank you so much for being here. This has been a wealth of inf information about not just entertainment, but where the workplace is today, where we're going, and, uh, and some smart tips for women and men, uh, especially getting into the entertainment industry. Tenacity is where it's at, it sounds like. Yes. Thanks so much. Thank you, Edie, again Thanks, for being Lee. here. And uh, we'll be back next week. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Bye-bye.